Hey everyone, thanks for your time joining my session. I hope you enjoyed it so much. So what I'm going to show you is a very cool use case integrating LAWS with our Meraki MV solutions. So what I'm going to show you is how to trigger a snapshot once a person is detected and how to perform a deeper image analytics uh, through Amazon AWS recognition. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so on the screen, you're, you're going to see my workflow. The first thing that's going to happen is that the Meraki MV is going to detect a person on the screen. And that is going to, to trigger MQTT messages constantly to a Linux server. In my case, I'm using a Raspberry Pi, but it can be any Linux server, okay? That's going to act as an MQTT broker, constantly evaluating the MQTT messages that is receiving. Once it evaluates that a person has been detected, that's going to trigger an API call through the AWS API Gateway services. And that is going to trigger the Lambda function. What the Lambda function is going to do is to take the camera snapshot and send the image bytes to the Amazon recognition service. Amazon recognition service is going to evaluate the picture and to, and to generate a deeper analysis. And it's going to return the response to the Lambda function. Lambda function is going to post the results into the WebEx room. And at that point of time, you are going to see the results yourself. So let's see how to configure it and how it works. So first of all, you'll have available this GitHub repo that I'll make available for you. One thing to note is that you have the Lambda model over here, so you are able to upload it. And then you'll have to MQTT trigger Python script that you'll upload to your Linux server. In my case, it's the Raspberry Pi, okay? What you'll need to do is to replace all the credentials with your own credentials. A couple of credentials here are the API key, the MV camera serial number, the base URL. Uh, it's not needed to touch, but you'll have to replace the AWS API URL, and you will you will find later what that is, and your MQTT broker address. That's the one that you're going to configure on the Linux server. As you can see, I've already uploaded the MQTT trigger Python script on my Raspberry Pi. Now I'm going to show you how to configure the MQTT broker once you already set it up on your Linux server on the Meraki dashboard. So you'll go to cameras, you'll select your camera, you go to settings, then to sense, and on the MQTT broker section, you'll add a new MQTT broker. So here you have the parameters. I'm going to skip this piece because I've already done it, but you can see that here I have my MQTT broker configure. In my case, I use the Mosquito. That's very lightweight and easy to configure. Then let's see the AWS piece. So once we have the MQTT broker configure on our Linux server, and we added, added it to the Meraki dashboard. Let's see how to configure the AWS services. So let's start with the Lambda function. So we search Lambda and we create a new function. We assign it a name. In my case, I'll use, for example, face mask underscore Lambda and I'll select the latest Python version. I'll hit create function. And now let's upload the zip file that I'll make available for you. You hit upload. You select the zip file and then hit save. As you can see, all the files and requirements are available over there. Don't forget to modify your own parameters with the AWS uh, credentials on the main underscore plate dot API file. Then let's hit on configuration and increase the timeout uh, 
parameters up to 15 seconds because of all the time that takes to the API calls to, to be executed. So with this, we are set up with a Lambda piece. Let's now configure the API gateway. So we create a new API. We select REST API. And we keep it the name. In this case, I'll assign face mask underscore API. And we hit Create API. Now we create a new resource, in this case, action, and then create resource. We will assign it a very simple name that's going to be face mask, and then create resource. And once this is done, we'll create a method under it. In this case, it will be a post method. Once the method is created, we'll assign it the lambda function that we have previously created. In this case, it's face mask underscore lambda. We hit OK. And we are not done yet. We now need to deploy our API. So we go to Actions. And we click on Deploy API. Then we assign a, a name for the deployment stage. I'll select production, for example. And the link or the URL that you are seeing over here is the AWS uh, public URL that you will use for the API call. Coincidentally, this is the link that I told you that you're going to replace on the MQTT trigger script on your Python file, OK? Let's go to the fun piece. Let's see how this really works. So you run the script on your Linux server, in my case, mass, my Raspberry Pi. And you see the MQTT messages popping up. The video expect a, a little delay because it's going through the cloud. But you know you can see that it has detected me in front of the camera, and the function has been triggered. So once the function has been triggered, let's see if it sends the message to my WebEx room. And now you can see it has detected one person, and this person is not wearing a face mask. Let's try now wearing a face mask. So the MQTT messages keep coming. Of course, the video is a little delayed, but once I'm in front of the camera, it'll trigger the script. Now I'm in front of the camera, and it has triggered the script again. It found a person now with the face mask. And let's see on the WebEx Teams what it looks like. And now, Quantity of the of detected people one. If it detects more than one person, it's going to say what it looks like for each one. If one is wearing a face mask, it, it will tell you person number one is wearing a face mask. And if, if the person number two is not, it will tell you person number two is not wearing a face mask. And it can distinguish whether they are wearing a, a face mask with the nose cover or not. And you can see in the picture that the, the exact moment where it triggered the snapshot. I hope you enjoyed the use case and I hope you try it by yourself. Thank you very much for watching my session and take care.